Hello, welcome to Ted TV. My name is Tide, and today I'm going to give you guys a small tutorial on proper camera angles and character movement in World of Warcraft. There's going to be two segments to this video, a beginner segment and an advanced segment. If you'd like to see the advanced segment, go ahead and click the link above. And if you want to keep watching the beginner segment, just keep on going. So positioning in World of Warcraft is paramount, and it has a huge impact on your DPS total, your tanking skills, and your ability to keep healing while making sure you're avoiding AoE and bad things. I'm going to give you guys a few tips and tricks on how to make sure we're staying out of fire, staying out of the bad stuff, and we're doing as much possible DPS and uptime on bosses and on players as we possibly can. So the first thing we're going to talk about might be um, a little bit of a no-brainer, but I have seen a lot of people lose DPS and lose sight of what they're doing because of little mistakes like this. So firstly, I want to make sure that all of you guys are placing your hands on the WASD keys to move. Now, why is this better over the arrow keys? Well, E and Q are used for strafing, and strafing is important, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Your hotkeys, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, are easily reachable with your middle finger, index finger, and ring finger. So you want to make sure that your hand is right near your hotkey so you can continuously use your abilities without having any downtime. This is where strafing comes in, because you can use E and Q to move directly to the left or directly to the right. And why is this important? Why is this more important than just moving the character? Well, you stay facing your target. So if you want to keep attacking something that's in front of you and move to the left or to the right, you can still strafe without having to turn your entire character and possibly lose DPS because you have to move out of something. Positioning yourself behind the target isn't as hard as it might sound. Now, you are able to stand to the very left or the very right of the target and it still considers you behind them. So if you have a target, for example, that stands at the edge of an arena, right? And you can't actually get behind them because there's nothing there, there's no platform. You can sit at the very edge, very, very edge, like the cliff side of the arena, where you can kind of see their back, sorta. Then you can still use your backstab moves, and so you can still use any move that would go from behind. This also is relevant to PvP. Now you can stand to the side of characters and still hit them from behind with backstabs and stuff like that and you can still prevent yourself from being parried or dodged. The next thing I want to talk about is your camera angle. Now, something you might want to get used to really early on is having your camera zoomed out as far as you're comfortable with. So, why do we do this? It's because we want to make sure we can see all the way around our characters and at the same time, see what's in front of us. So essentially, if you get attacked from behind, if there's something spawning behind you, if there's something coming from behind you, you know where it is, how to avoid it, how to preemptively get ready to pull, dodge, taunt, heal, whatever it may be. And another thing that we want to make sure that we cover is making sure you learn how to mouse turn. Now this is something that is a huge issue with most people that I've mentored, is usually that right in the beginning, nobody's comfortable with mouse turning. It feels very awkward, very clunky, and I kind of understand. but. The reason it's so important is because you turn faster while holding right click than you do while using A or D. So how exactly do you mouse turn? When you left click, you turn the camera. When you right click, you turn the camera with your character. So the character turns with you while you're holding right click. So if you right click while holding you know, W to move forward, you can turn your character while running, just like you would with you know A or D. However, it happens much, much faster than it would using the A or D method. Why do we do this? Because when you're attacking a target in PvP, when you're trying to move quickly around mobs, you want to make sure that you don't have to wait for your character to turn slowly using the A or D keys. So a good way to practice this, just get on a dummy and run around it while keeping your camera centered on the dummy. It's an easy way to practice, but when you're getting into dungeons, try, and do, try doing this. Try picking a target and as the tank taunts it around, you move around with it and keep it at the center of your, of your screen while holding right click. It's not really that difficult, it's just very strange at first, very uncomfortable almost. But of course it depends on how long you've been playing the game and how comfortable you are with trying new methods. So that about wraps up the beginner stuff, now we're going to move straight into the advanced stuff. So what are we going to be talking about in the advanced stuff? Well, we're going to be talking about only advanced movement. Advanced movement encompasses kiting, shuffling, 
perfect angles, and a few little other tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. So, while not completely advanced, because you do learn it as you're leveling up if you're playing a tank, what's really important is learning how to kite. Now I'm going to show you how to kite players and how to kite bosses. Now kiting them both are completely different, because melee cannot kite players the way casters can. But, as a tank, kiting becomes very important because you want to make sure you position the boss in the place where the raid has the most optimal and effective form of attacking. So. When we kite a boss, we want to make sure that you're aware when they cast, some bosses can move and cast. And if this is the case, they will walk straight up to you, like almost onto your hitbox to hit you. If they don't, then they will only get as far as melee range to be able to attack you. Now this gets a little wonky at some points because sometimes the boss is in the middle of casting when you have to move him, such as Archimond when he's casting his Doomfire. You have to actually move him while he's casting it. And if you do it right, he'll land right on top of you, and he'll start to melee you. Us as players have very small hitboxes, and the boss's melee range is only as big as a player's melee range. So as you can imagine, they don't really have to be that far to be able to hit you. When it comes to other players, you want to make sure you're in enough range that you can move out of their melee range. Just in case they're going to hit you with something strong, they have something ready for you, they're going to hit you with an ambush, they're going to hit you with a heroic strike. And you want to make sure that you're not going to get hit by that. So if you got them stunned, if you got them locked, you can go ahead and get in there, get in their face, beat them up, and then try to get yourself as distanced as you possibly can. As a caster, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You want to get range, shoot spells at them when they get close, you move away, run away, use some movement increase, use a teleport, use a blink, use disengage, but depending on your class, use whatever you can to give yourself some distance, give yourself some leeway to attack and cast spells. The next technique we're going to be talking about is called shuffling, and this is when you use your E and Q strafing keys to move around your target and try to shuffle back and forth as much as you can. Now you do this so that you have a lower chance of being targeted by a mouse click and you have a lower chance of being peeled off by casters. This is more of a BG technique, not so much of an arena technique. However, you can use this to move in front and behind your target by walking through them, thus making it harder for them to attack you. If they're melee, then you need to be in front of them for them to hit you. And if they're casters, their spells can only go off if you're in front of them. So if you move right behind a caster as they're casting their spell, you might be able to actually interrupt that spell just by being behind them at the right time. This makes it so that it says on their screen, your target must be in front of you, your target is out of range. So that about wraps it up for my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I really had fun making this video. I think I'm going to do a lot more of these little tutorials. Hopefully I can reach out to some of the new player base, some of the more experienced player base, and get some good tips and tricks in there. That way we can all become better players together. So go ahead and leave me a comment if you want me to do something specific next time. Uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy and have a great day.